So good afternoon. That's where you say good afternoon back. <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I'm Dale Urquiaga, and this is my um, partner in crime for the next hour, Aaron Macias. And we're going to chat with you about the two organizations um, where we each work. Uh, we're going to, though, do that through the lens of social emotional learning. So before I start talking at you for a minute, show of hands, how many of you are teachers or instructional personnel? That's what you do primarily, okay? How many of you might work in what I would call student supports or wraparound services, guidance counselors, that side of the business? Couple, okay, great. And then other in the room? Kind of couple of others, great. So lots of instructional personnel, and so that's great. Um, Aaron has lots of uh, tips for you uh, that you can use in your classroom. Um, it's my pleasure, though, to give you a little bit of context about uh, social emotional learning in a community context uh, based on my organization's experience with social emotional learning in the largest sense and with the Sanford Harmony program specifically. So. Over the next hour, we're going to try to touch on all of these topics. We'll tell you a little bit about the Sanford Harmony and Communities in Schools, which we shorthand to CIS, uh, uh, our partnership together. And then I'll give you an overview of Communities in Schools uh, as we view building a community of support. And then Aaron, who is usually much more fun than I am, and today is a whole lot more fun than I am. He has handouts, he has games, he will make you do SEL. Uh, activities for the afternoon um, and he'll um, wrap us up and then uh, we'll both leave you our contact information in case you're interested. So let me start here. Um, the gentleman on this uh, screen now in this photograph is Bill Milliken. About 50 years ago in Harlem, Bill began working with young men exclusively in those days who had already left school and what they lacked in their life he ultimately learned was a relationship and that's what the real reason that they left school. There might have been other reasons that seemed to come to the surface, but at the core of it was the fact that they connected with no one in the school building. This is 50 years ago in Harlem. He began to build in those days street academies, so they were what we would call today alternative schools. 50 years ago, they didn't really exist, and they certainly didn't exist in Harlem. He ultimately took the work to Georgia, however, and there, uh, Governor Carter, encouraged him to take the movement inside schools, not to be outside schools catching students after they had left. And so 42 years ago, he founded an organization originally called Cities in Schools, later called Communities in Schools, based on really this quote. Bill said this years ago that it's relationships, not programs, that actually make change among young people um, and really among all of us. So for 42 years, Communities in Schools has been perfecting that idea. Today, it's a heavy uh, evidence-based model, and I like to tease Bill. Bill is still on my board. He's vice chair of the national board for whom I work. And I like to tease Bill that 42 years later, 50 years after Harlem, the science has caught up with him. We now know uh, from brain science and neurology that, that he was actually right. Having a relationship, our brain fires in different ways, um, and the social-emotional work that you'll hear about today actually impacts the way kids learn. So we have been at this work um, building on Bill's uh, vision um, around this mission, that we surround kids with a community of support. So as a practical matter, almost all of the students that I serve across the country, and I'll show you a map in a minute, um, live at some level of poverty. I think 94% of my kids qualify for free and reduced price lunch. Um, poverty is the first barrier um, that brings kids into our orbit, and they are often brought to us for a community of support that looks like basic needs, food, clothing, shelter, transportation. Underlying that, however, is almost always some level of adverse childhood experience based on poverty, often based on race, uh, based on some other category or socio, um, social economic status of the child or demographic of of that child or his and his or her family. So we usually begin by providing a community of support that looks like food, clothing, shelter, those sorts of things. And then we evolve um, into work that really is about trauma-informed care and social emotional learning. That's um, the easy way to think about it. And this is why we do that. 
Um, you in your classrooms, you see this, I'm sure, some part of this every day. Those of you who work in student supports um, probably see these barriers or these issues, root causes of conflict in a child's life. So it might look like um, they're showing up late, but the real reason is conflict at home. Um, or it might look like um, they're coming to school hungry, but if you dig into that, you might find that there's an incarcerated parent. Or students may begin to leave school exhibiting um, that kind of conduct or acting out at school, and really it's a self-esteem issue, right? None of this is um, surprising. If you work particularly with marginalized populations or at-risk students, um, these are the things that they live with every day. And for a long time, um, we ignored it in public school. That was home and we're at school, so you should just sit and take the test. Well, if they're hungry or if uh, they have an incarcerated parent or they're dealing with any of these issues on this um, diagram, they're not thinking about the test, right? They're not thinking about um, acquiring literacy skills. So that's where communities and schools come in. We place a caring adult, uh, trained professional inside schools um, to work through this theory of change. It always begins in the area of developing relationships and it, um, we are proud to say that 99% of our kids continue on from grade to grade and our graduation rate with our case managed kids um, is in the mid 90s nationwide. So our youth population would normally have a graduation rate of somewhere in the 65 to 75% depending on their demographic and so this um, act of providing support and an evidence-based model that moves a child through this theory of change keeps them in school. We started as a dropout prevention program. At our core, we are still a dropout prevention program. But today, we're asked by schools, typically Title I schools, to do far more than dropout work. And we work in the kindergarten through 12th grade space. Because you are all educators, you know that dropping out is not an act. It is a process, and the behaviors that contribute to that process begin really, really young. Kids begin to check out um, really, really young, and those barriers that were on the earlier slide get in their way really, really young. And we have learned through our science and lots of other uh, brain science that's been done in the last decade that, as I said, that caring relationship, the building of those social emotional skills is actually um, sort of the secret sauce that progresses a student from grade to grade. Um, and it impacts their attendance, it impacts their behavior, and ultimately it impacts their coursework. So here's where um, my communities and schools family um, lives today. You will note we are not in Hawaii. Uh, we are also not in Alaska. But we are in 26 states uh, and the District of Columbia, and we serve 1.6 million students. That's a lot of kids to be involved in a single program. The bad fact is um, 25, uh, just over 25 million of the 50 million students in American public schools qualify for free and reduced price lunch. 12 million students in the United States um, live below the poverty line. So I'm really proud of my $1.6 million figure and I am barely scratching the surface of need. Uh, and so we work very hard at the national office where I work um, to build local affiliates. We work through an affiliated structure. So in each of these blue states, I will have anywhere from one to, in some states, 50 affiliates doing work. The largest population uh, for us is in Texas. Um, but a very, uh, I think the fifth largest network, or state in my network is Nevada, which happens to be where I was born and raised. And it happens to be where Aaron used to work. Aaron was a communities and schools site coordinator, is what we call the folks who are embedded in schools. And he has left communities and schools, but I don't resent that fact, <laughs> because he now works for Sanford Harmony, who are a great partner of ours. So as we look at our footprint, and Sanford looks at uh, what they are trying to do to bring their program, which you're gonna hear about, to kids, we partnered up um, to do a pilot program beginning in school year 1819. Uh, we started with nine of my affiliates spread around in those blue states, um, and we did a comparison, comparative study of students who were in the Sanford Harmony program. My staff was trained to deliver the SEL activities that you're going to enjoy this afternoon, and some students uh, received those activities. Some similarly situated students in the CIS family did not, and so we saw differences, about a three to five percent gain in attendance, behavior, and coursework goals for our kids. So I can tell you 
not only do I believe uh, writ large in relationships and social emotional learning, I believe very strongly in this program because I've seen it work with my kids. We're now scaling that to I think 120 schools um, in the elementary space and I think I have 700 or 800 elementary schools in my network. So Aaron, you better get cracking because I got a lot more schools <laughs> and a lot more kids. So for communities and schools in general, these are the evidence-based results that we're very proud of. As I said, 99% of my kids progress to the next grade level. 88% of our kids meet or uh, make progress towards their academic improvement goals. Uh, and 93% of our seniors graduated or have uh, a GED. Those data points are really important to us. We believe in relationships, clearly. We believe in building social emotional skills. And kids are in school to succeed academically and progress to the next grade and ultimately graduate. And so our work is not done in isolation. Um, we do not use the term wraparound services at communities and schools. We use the term integrated student supports because we are integrated into school life actually write a plan with the principal and staff at the school, and we're in, uh, integrated into student and family life. Of the 1.6 million kids, we case manage about 10% of that number intensively. Many of our staff are social workers, though not all. Many are just trained um, in our model and in a variety of other um, interventions, and they broker in services. Our name is exactly what we do. We bring community inside school. Um, if you go to some of the, I know there are sessions at this, convening around community schooling. Community schools, with little c, little s, will have integrated student supports inside them as um, one of the typically characterized as four pillars. So this work of integrated community, integrating community supports, whether that's something simple like a food bank or a backpack to go home with food. How many of your schools run programs like that where you send kids home with a backpack? Pretty common in some schools. Uh, that's the sort of entry level work for us. This work goes all the way up to us with pretty intensive mental and behavioral health uh, counseling or referral um, to clinics um, with kids. And that theme of social emotional work all the way through there is what we think um, makes the real difference for our kids. So I'm gonna stop there. Um, I wanted you to have a little bit of context for our organization. We are not educators, we are partners with educators. And so in our model, we would ideally be inside your schools um, to work alongside you, write a plan, create a needs assessment based on your whole school needs and your individual school needs. But the tool that we would use is what Aaron's gonna talk with you about um, for the rest of our session. So Aaron. Give Dale a round of applause, please. Hello everybody, my name is Aaron Macias. Um, I was previously with Community Schools as a site coordinator, which really is a hands-on uh, counselor type uh, case management individual with communities and schools. Um, I also grew up in a lot of the situations that the students that Community Schools serves, um, you know, helps. And so with my experience in growing up that way and being able to serve students, um, it really opened my eyes to a lot of different things in education um, because throughout my life in education, it wasn't always a case that I was reaching out for help or nor did I get help from somebody that, that wanted to just say, hey, Aaron, I'm here for you, right? Um, so throughout time, I realized that half of it was I wasn't reaching out as a, as a student, as somebody growing up. Um, a lot of it because of the culture um, that I grew up in, the environment that I grew up in. Um, you don't ask help for help. Um, and then I failed to realize that people sometimes were trying to help me, um, but then I would step back. Uh, so building healthy relationships, as I grew into adulthood, I finally had a breakthrough. Somebody, you know, when I was about to graduate high school, I always knew education was important. Um, but when I was about to graduate high school, somebody finally sat down and said, hey, and it wasn't, a, it, the funny thing is it wasn't a counselor, it wasn't anybody, um, you know, within a school setting that actually um, had that breakthrough. It was actually somebody else outside of it that I had attended a conference as, as an outgoing senior um, in the community of Nevada. And so they finally had a conversation with me and they sat down and did an entire plan. It was then I realized that relationships, um, like communities and schools, what they do, is really important because without that relationship, I wouldn't have, have realized um, my, my true potential. Um, and so 
With that being said, I, I ended up being a program director with Communities and Schools. I decided I was going to move out of uh, Nevada into California. Um, so I didn't leave Communities and Schools because I wanted to, um, but it was because it was a decision that I had made and it was out of the network of, of CIS. Um, but I did find Sanford Harmony. Um, and Sanford Harmony for me was a perfect mesh of what we were doing with communities and schools and how you can work with educational institutions, whether it's schools, districts, um, we work with communities and schools, Boys and Girls Club, and really bring social emotional learning skills to students in a way that allows them as they grow through education to realize that they can collaborate, communicate, they can be, um, they can be, uh, with one another empathetic, um, include diversity, I mean, have diversity and inclusion. Um, so Denny Sanford is really the reason why the Sanford Harmony program exists. Uh, Denny Sanford is an entrepreneur, philanthropist. Those of you who don't know who Denny Sanford is, he's kind of like a Bill Gates kind of person where he's made his fortune in banking um, and entrepreneurship and has pledged to give back. Um, he's given back a lot in the health industry, cancer research, specifically a lot of children's hospitals. Um, if you Google Sanford, you'll see Sanford Health Centers all over the country. Um, that's because he, he donates a lot to the research and to those clinics. Um, with that being said, he also realized that research takes a long time when it comes to cancer and other, other, um, other diseases that, that, that are prevalent. And so he wanted to create something where he saw an immediate difference um, as, uh, during his lifetime. Um, with that being said, he created uh, Sanford Harmony and Denny's goal is to inspire, oh, aspire to inspire before he expires. So really, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's really his quote. <laughs> Um, and we love it because it's really about making that difference um, and inspiring, not only giving tools and resources, but inspiring others um, to really um, work with students to be successful as adults. So Sanford Harmony was, uh, Denny started research and development with ASU University. Um, and we have ongoing research as well with Johns Hopkins University. So we are an evidence-based program. Um, and we are actually doing a few longitudinal studies with Johns Hopkins as we continue to, to grow our program and ensure that we're moving the right direction for our students. Um, we wanna make sure that the impact is there. Let me go back to that slide. I did wanna mention something. Um, as the early results from ASU studies and the research and development that was done over an eight uh, year period, um, we saw increase in achievement, school enjoyment and empathy um, in those classrooms that had Sanford Harmony. And then also stereotype bullying and aggression decreased. Um, and I'll tell you why in, as we continue with the presentation. Um, we are also a CASEL Select program. Uh, CASEL, for those of you who are not aware of CASEL, CASEL is kind of the clearing house of social emotional learning. It's called the Collaborative for Academic and Social Emotional Learning. Um, they, if you get the stamp of approval, pretty much the CASEL Select program, it means that you went through rigorous evaluation through the CASEL network um, and you were approved as a SEL program within their network as well. Um, that takes the research, they, they, all the units and all the development that we've done with our curriculum um, is all taken into consideration as they, as they um, look into that. We're also uh, CASEL aligned, which means that we see their co uh, core competencies um, and our program fits into every area of their, of their um, competencies as well. So with Harmony, it's really designed to create an environment where it's safe for students to celebrate one another, um, to really respect one another, um, and our curriculum uh, intentionally allows for that to be built within an environment, um, whether it's a classroom, whether it's an after school program, whether it's outside of uh, you know Boys and Girls Club. Um, and it really helps everybody become included. And why I'm going into that a little bit is because they'll um, kind of mentioned earlier is building those relationships and feeling safe um, in a place where you're able to really talk about it. Our program allows students to feel safe with one another and also with the educators, parents, and anybody who else who goes through our program. Essentially, our goal is to become focused to, to create focused students um, by you know, creating social emotional skills um, that will allow them to be successful academically and then eventually as they grow into uh, successful adults. 
So children who participate in SEL programs demonstrate improved classroom behavior, ability to manage stress, uh, ability to manage depression, um, attitude about themselves, understanding of others, and connection to school. Um, the last one is really the one that I love out of this, is the connection to school. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it was hard for me to ask for help. It was, help, it was hard for me to really realize um, that somebody was trying to help me. And part of it was because I didn't have that connection to either anybody at school or anybody who was trying to, even my, my peers. Um, so it's very, very um, important to create that in an environment. Um, and this is why Harmony works. Our curriculum allows us to strengthen learning communities. It is intentional in everything that we do. The goal is to build healthy relationships among students, amongst the teachers, amongst uh, their parents, uh, to allow them to really focus on education. Um, alignment, besides CASEL, we're also district, state, and national initiatives. We're aligned with um, various SEL standards at different states. Um, Teacher toolkits. Our teacher toolkits, this is just a small sample of our entire curriculum. Um, they include strategies, stories, lessons, and activities. Uh, for the younger students, we have stories. Um, as you can see, we have storybooks for different grade levels. Um, you really read it to a student, but the strategies in there are intentional. Um, they ask questions, they ask students to really start thinking about um, you know, what, what the communication, collaboration, problem solving, all of that as well. And they're all age appropriate as well. Um, flexible to fit scheduling needs. This is one of the things that we always get asked. You know, well, I already have curriculum. You know, how do I fit this into my schedule? The beauty about our program is that we, through research, we've noticed um, what well, we, we have uh, proven that no matter how much you use the program, it's effective. Obviously, the more you use it, the more effective it is, um, the, the more competencies you build. Um, but you, we have different resources within our program and materials that really allows you to be flexible um, with our program and fit it in within five, 10 minutes. Um, you already do some of the things that, that we do. We just create strategies that are intentional and really are focused on ensuring that you already have everything given to you versus you having to create new, new items. As I mentioned earlier, it is donor-based. Uh, what it means for you all is that it's at no cost to you. Uh, Denny Sanford has provided a very hefty investment into our program that allows us to really give you guys all of our materials, our resources, training, PD, all at no cost. Um, and there's no gimmick, there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing where it's like, oh, later on, year two, no, we don't charge you um, anything at all. It's at no cost because his focus, again, is to inspire before he, asks, uh, he expires, right? Um, so really getting as many students as possible. We're currently serving over 8 million students. We're partnered with over 19,000 schools, districts, and organizations, um, and, and serving educators uh, across 20 countries. So how does it work? And we'll kind of get into the hands-on um, everyday practices. So we have everyday practices that you incorporate into your classroom on every day. And it doesn't mean just because it says every day that you have to do it every day. Um, again, the more you use them, the better, right? Um, the better outcomes. But we have monitor harmony goals. So you create harmony goals, and a lot of you already do this through your classroom rules, right? Um, again, we provide a structure that will allow you to come back, monitor those goals, and really talk to your students about whether they're following, whether we adjust those goals, um, and just talk about how those goals are incorporated on a daily basis. Um, we also have a meetup. The meetup is uh, similar to circle time. Um, but again, we provide a structure, and I'll show you the structure. Um, it really does um, advocate for students to be the voice, um, to have their own voice, and to really problem solve within a uh, meetup. And then we have Buddy Up. Buddy Up is honestly one of my favorite components of the program. And I say that because it really is that one-on-one -on -one relationship, um, similar to what Dale was talking about, is that building of one another, right? Um, throughout the school year, you see it in your classrooms all the time. Some students gravitate to other students that they already know. Um, once they know somebody, it's like they want to sit with them, they want to do group work with them, they want to do everything. Our Buddy Up intentionally um, helps students pair up with students that they normally wouldn't um, in, a, in a way that is also not like, no, you're not 
doing it with him today. It's a structure um, that you can tell your students from the beginning and they'll see that you can create charts, we have trackers, we have a bunch of things that help you um, make it easy for you all to actually go through the process of Buddy Up. So Harmony Goals, how do they work? I kind of touched on this, it's similar to classroom rules. Um, you make agreements, students sign it because you need buy-in. Um, you make the agreements with the students. Allow the students to really talk about um, what is it that they want to see out of the classroom. Um, and of course you guide this, uh, depending on the age group, um, you might guide this. But this is an example of what we have, and this is an actual school that, that sent this to us. Uh, be kind and listen. Always greet your neighbors and say their name. Be respectful to everyone. Be supportive of your neighbor or buddy. Um, and then they all signed it. And I'll tell you how it plays into our meetup um, as we move forward. So Buddy Up is the one that I've told you. We have trackers, we have tools, we have ways that you pair each student with a different buddy each week and engage in brief activities and discussions. Um, we have tools which are quick connection cards that allow you guys to really choose whatever card you want or if you want your students to choose um, for your Buddy Up activities where students are paired with different students each week. What this means is that by the end of the school year, every student will have at least spent one week with a buddy, um, which means that they're gonna get to know each other pretty well. Um, and you can do this through group work. So if you've already assigned a buddy um, throughout the week, that means that when you have a group work, that's who they're gonna work with, right? Even if it's outside of our curriculum. Um, that buddy chart and the, the buddy tracker really allows you to use it beyond just what we do. Um, and with that being said, um, why Buddy Up? Well, it brings together diverse peers who may not typically work with one another. Again, it, it eliminates that want and, and need to gravitate to a certain group of students that you always are, 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 are that students, that we always see students doing. Um, we also allow students to discover commonalities, differences, and talents. Um, we have different cards that some of them are collaboration cards, some of them are actually like group work, some of them are creative cards, um, some of them are just, you know, conversation cards. Um, so it really allows them to kind of know one another at an accelerated pace because the card says you have to, right? Uh, <laughs> usually the, the funny part about it is that um, I was talking to somebody earlier in the room and, and I see him in here, I'm not gonna say who it is, um, but I was talking about him, he, he was a counselor and he's talking about, you know, he, he, he works with students one-on-one -on -one, and one of the things that I hit on is that, uh, you know, sometimes that alone is a wall, right? The, the relationship between a student and professional in any kind of way until they let their wall down and you build that relationship of trust, that, that alone is already a wall. Um, even if you ask them a simple question, hey, what'd you do today? Some students are like, nothing, yeah? Um, so, yeah, but these cards, a simple card breaks down that wall because it's not me asking as a professional. It's somebody is just pulling a card and saying, hey, the card said, you know, what'd you do today? more than likely because the card, and you can go even further, allow them to pull the card. Now they're the ones pretty much asking themselves the question, right? Um, so there's a, there's a lot of components to it that make it very effective. Um, and so uh, the, again, you really get to know a student at an accelerated pace um, and promotes collaboration, caring, and empathy. I'm gonna tell you guys a story about empathy and it's just a general story, um, but really, when I think about empathy, that's one of the things that we see with bullying, you know, aggression, all these other things is that empathy um, is not there, right? Um, so when I think about it, even as an adult and in your own personal life, you might be able to, to relate, is that when something happens to somebody who you have gotten to know as an individual, you're more than likely to want to be there for them right? You're more than likely to want to take your time out of your day to ensure that you follow up with them, whether it's just a message, whether it's just saying, hey, are you okay? You know, I know you, this happened in your life. Um, and we do that as adults, right? Um, if something happened to somebody who you don't know, you still might have that, that, that feeling of, oh my gosh, you know, I feel for you. Um, but you're not going to go out of your way to go and talk to somebody that you don't know um, you know, and, and really be ensure that they're okay. 
Um, so building that empathy is huge uh, because that's how you, you kind of um, remove some of those behaviors, some of those bullying, aggression. Um, and you also, those students who are typically on their own or shy or, or alone in a sense, um, bring them back into the group. So we, we love um, that portion of our curriculum. So now, I want to go ahead and start a quick connection, and, I, and I've talked about it, but until you feel it, um, you really won't know what our program does. Um, so what I want you to do is find a person that you don't know within the room um, and within your proximity. I know it's kind of tight. Um, so within your proximity, um, somebody who you may not know already, and I want you to ask each other this question. What is your favorite meal? And who makes it? And don't forget to introduce yourself. <laughs> but what is your favorite meal and who makes it? And I'll give you a couple minutes. All righty. If you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear me, clap twice. All righty. So the room went from very quiet to a lot of conversation. I saw a lot of smiles. Um, for those of you who are comfortable, I'm going to ask maybe two, three people to share. Um, and you can just share simply what the other person said, if the other person is comfortable with that as well. Um, and then just let us know who, what is your favorite meal and who makes it. Any volunteers? Kelly likes pasta. <laughs> Kelly likes pasta. And who makes it? Uh, also, I said that if I have to make, I'll make it. But if not, my sister makes it. Yeah. pasta, right? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? Lisa loves salmon, and she gave us a great way to cook it, so I'm like really excited about that. And Carrie and her husband like to do chicken in the Instapot, so they're sampling different recipes. Awesome. Well, thank you all for sharing. Simple exercise. What is your favorite meal? Who makes it? Right? And we got to know even a little more than that. You guys were still conversing when, you know, when the conversation started. Um, for those of you who may have not known each other and we're still having a conversation, that's what this program does, is really give you the opportunity to have students begin to have a natural conversation um, that really evolves past what just the cards ask. Um, and the simple fact that the card is asking, again, drops that barrier of that awkward, how do I start a conversation with somebody? How do I talk to somebody that I normally wouldn't? Um, you know, because now you're, you're doing that in a way that it is intentional. Um, and it went beyond that. So I love the fact that you guys were sharing and, and you, you even mentioned recipes, sharing recipes and, you know, being able to cook it for each other. Um, <laughs> And so one of the things that I love about this as well is for those of you who are counselors, case managers, or just have that relationship with your students that you're, you're really trying to figure out what is it that I, can, that I can do to get to know this student so that I can help them, um, right? Um, so we love this because it allows you to break that, that barrier, but it also allows you to know what students are going through. When I work with CIS, one of the things that, that we're trying to do is try to find out what barriers these students had um, because we want to make sure that we help them any kind of way that we can, whether it's basic needs, mental health, um, counseling, whether it was, you know, that some situations were CPS related. And, you know, that was the, the mission is to ensure that these students are safe, that they're included, that they feel like they have somebody that will be able to be there for them. And so even a simple question like this will give you a lot of information with students. What is your favorite meal? For some students, they might not have options, right? And that tells you enough in itself. Who makes it? You can get so much information for those of you who are counselors and even, like I said, those of you who are intrigued in just trying to help your students as educators, that can tell you alone who makes it. Well, my sister that's you know, in high school because my parents are not home or whatever it is, it leads to those conversations that you're able to really get through to students and then they're more likely to be involved in their education and wanna be there um, and once they're, those barriers are eliminated. Um, so those, that's really the power of the program and social emotional learning in itself um, is, is having the ability to get through to students and such a fast pace 
um, that it allows you to really move on to the academic and create successful uh, students and adults. So if you can spend the day with anybody, who would it be and what would you do? Find somebody different and take a moment to really talk about that as well. And I'll, I'll, do, I'll bring you guys back in with my clapping. Um, but take a couple minutes and, and talk about that as well. If you can hear me clap once. If you can hear me clap twice. All right. Would anybody like to share? <laughs> yeah, I saw her nudge you. <laughs> Would you like to share? Are you okay? <laughs> And she would love to spend her time with her husband. Mm -hmm. And just, what would they do? They would just have like downtime. They don't have to do anything. It's just to <laughs> be with her husband. And if they want to go shopping, they can go shopping. They want to go to the beach, they can go eat. Beach so sounds nice. Be together. That is awesome. Thank you, Ursula. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Yeah. thank you for sharing and thank you for allowing her to share, Ursula. <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> um, Simple things, but you know you don't think about it on a regular basis, right? Is is taking that time to to do it. So maybe after this, you can take that time to schedule that. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else would like to share? I want to share. Uh, Del and I actually did the activity. Um, so we he asked me, you know, who would I, and then I asked him back. I'm not going to share mine. I'm going to share his. <laughs> 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 so um, I did ask Dale for permission, and it was uh, similar, spending time with somebody they love, right? So he said his, his children. Um, you know, he, throughout his life, has obviously built a very successful career, um, but he wants those moments to be able to spend time um, with his children and just talk. Um, his daughter also loves shopping. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so really just getting the time to sit back and um, take that time to, to do that. Um, for me, I went the opposite. For me, it wasn't somebody who was living. My father passed away when I was 16 years old in high school. Um, and one of the things that I mentioned is that I would love the opportunity to sit down one day and talk to him as an adult, right? Because it's, it's different. So it's interesting, um, and again, this, card can go different ways for different people, um, but it really gives you the opportunity to get to know somebody a little deeper at a very fast pace, right? Um, now we know that Ursula has a husband that she needs to schedule a date with for all day. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's not that externally, but internally that's what she wants. Um, so yes. <laughs> You made a great point. Um, you might not be like that. You might not show that. Um, and students are the same. They might not show that. But that's probably what they need, what they want. Um, you know, and so how do we continue to use this curriculum, Sanford Harmony, um, with these quick connection cards? And that's just a portion of our curriculum, um, really to be able to get students to open up, communicate, collaborate, be empathetic with one another, get to know each other to the point where you're actually knowing somebody. I know people in my life that I've known for years and years and years that I'm, I sometimes take these quick election cards and I'm like, I probably haven't asked you this question ever, right, in years. Um, so just accelerating that pace I think is very important, um, especially in a classroom environment because you know once you create that environment, you're more than likely gonna have your students be uh, bonded more. They're gonna be able to talk to each other with a lot more ease. Um, less likely to probably bully each other um, because of the fact that they know each other, as I talked earlier about that empathy, um, knowing, that, knowing that you know them personally now, it's not going to be something that you just you know, throw on somebody. Um, so it's really, really, really powerful. Um, so what did you learn about your buddy? We kind of already talked about that. And how did it make you feel when you shared with one another? Um, so can maybe one or two of you just tell me how it made you feel when you shared with one another? Anybody want to volunteer before I volunteer? <laughs> I was sharing mine, and I listened over my shoulder, and my neighbor was sharing something very similar, and it made me, at which the three of us and probably others shared that it would be a 
now gone parent. Um, and I thought I was probably the only one that was going to say that. Then I realized, no, there's a lot of us saying the same thing. Yeah, that's that's awesome. You you felt more connected probably knowing that that you're not alone in that in that aspect. And, and again, very powerful. Anybody else? All right, I won't want to tell anybody. Oh, one in the back. Oh. That's it, a feeling of joy. Just kind of like that's kind of cool. People always hear that they want to spend the day with the rock. I'm like, who said Bill Gates? Who said the rock? Hey. And, and that's, people are different, and it's okay. And it's still something that you didn't think about, and it's like, you didn't think about Bill Gates, you didn't think about The Rock, but it's still okay. Um, so yeah, so thank you, thank you for sharing that as well. Um, it is going to be different, different levels. Some students will share different things, some will be very like, ah, oh, superhero, and that's fine. Um, but it, it gives you a gauge of who your students are, um, where they're at in, in life. As, as you continue to do this, you'll obviously get to know um, when you are doing any kind of rewards and stuff like that. How cool is it if you know that 10 people in, the audit, in your classroom um, love Spider-Man or something, right? Something as simple as that. More than likely, for those of you who give prizes uh, throughout the year, it's easy to go get some Spider-Man stuff, and that alone will motivate the students. Um, you know, so it's really little things that become big things, especially over time, um, that, will, that will make it very, very effective. So meetup. Let's talk about meetup, and I talked about the Harmony Goals earlier, and we won't do a meetup because a meetup is pretty much a big community circle. There's no way we're going to be able to do that in here with the time frame that we have as well. Um, so how does it work? Students meet in a circle to greet one another, sh share, monitor harmony goals, solve problems, and engage in community building activities. Um, so everybody gets together. One of the best things that I like about Meetup um, is that it begins on a positive. Um, and it really is about a focus on positive relationships and expectations um, for the classroom. A lot of people do it at the beginning of the day. Some people do it in the middle of the day after uh, lunch or recess. And then other, one, other people do it uh, at the end of the day so that they can close on a positive. So it just depends on, you know, again, the flexibility of you being able to do it whenever you feel um, it's the right time for your, for your classroom environment. Um, it creates a sense of belonging. Just like we talked about, it's, you know, you're not alone. Um, you, you get to know each other and you feel like as a part of a group. Uh, builds inclusion, teamwork, and community. Um, it enhances communication, collaboration, and group problem solving. Um, we don't problem solve for the students. The students problem solve for themselves. Um, how we do that is through, um, you, you'll see the steps, but it really is the harmony goals. You always refer back to those. Um, because it's easy, it's easy to say, hey, you know, what is something uh, on the Harmony Goals that you saw a student do today at recess? Um, and then a student is able to share, right? Oh, I saw, you know, this person do this for another student, or I saw them do, you know, pick up, you know, trash or whatever it is, right? Um, and then vice versa. What is something that somebody did not follow on the Harmony Goals, um, and how can we solve that? So really, really um, talking about, okay, what can we do different? Um, and having that conversation because that's half of the battle is having the conversation, right? Um, students are not going to change their behaviors. They're not going to follow the rules or follow the goals or, or be really vested in any of that um, unless they're, being, they're, they're talking about it and it's actually uh, present um, within the classroom. So foster empathy and understanding, we talked already about that. Um, so meetup always starts with a greeting. Um, and one of the main reasons we start with a greeting is because sometimes students, before they leave the house, have nobody that said good morning to them, has nobody said that said hello to them, um, nobody that, you know, even, even as they're going into the school, sometimes they just go to their classroom, go to line, go wherever they have to go um, before they even get greeted. Um, so if you start this at the beginning of your class time, perfect. Right? It's the first time somebody gets a greeting, it's a positive, um, you know, it's more likely to, to change um, the way they interact the rest of the day. If you close it, it's the same thing, they leave on a positive. Um, sharing and responding, we talked about sharing the experiences that they might have had that day, how they relate to the harmony goals, um, and then being able to, to problem solve that. 
which goes into the community check-in um, during that time. Talk about the highs of the day, talk about the lows, um, and how do you solve the problems so that they don't continue to the next day or to the next activity that you're doing, um, you know, if math or English or whatever it is that's, that's going into the next activity. Um, and then a quick connection. So you end it on something like we did um, right now. Um, we, we have some that even are just like a wave, right? Just get people energized and then, all right, let's go do our next activity. So that's the steps that we have for Meetup. Um, we have tools and resources to help you with Meetups. We have tools and resources to help you with, um, with uh, the Buddy Up as well. All of our Harmony units um, build social emotional learning competencies, um, diversity and inclusion, empathy and critical thinking, communication, problem solving, and peer relationships. Um, the goal is to build healthy relationships that allow students to focus in education um, and really be successful adults. Um, we know that if we build these skills at a young age, and that's why the program is pre-K to sixth grade, um, is because if we can build them at a young age, um, researchers have, research shows that more than likely they're going to carry those skills as they continue to grow into middle school, high school, and, and beyond. Um, all of our grade levels have these five focus themes. So whether it's first grade, second grade, pre-K, K, um, they all have these focus themes, all the way up to sixth grade. Pre-K to second grade, uh, this is where they meet Z and the Treehouse Friends. Uh, Z, I wish I would have brought my plushie, I would have showed you Z. Z is an alien from outer space that crash lands on planet Earth next to the Treehouse Friends. Um, and Z is not a he or she, is just Z. Um, and Z needs to learn how to make friends, learn how to be a friend, and then learn how to keep friends. And that's how we get into our curriculum and our focus themes of empathy, critical thinking, of making the right decisions, how to problem solve, um, and ensure that you're communicating as well. So all of, all of that goes into our storybooks. Um, we have two sets of storybooks. One are pre-K, K and then our first and second grade, and it depends on the age group, and that's why the differences in the competencies and everything goes through that. Um, lessons and activities and songs. We even have songs uh, that, the students can, that the students can sing. Um, and then we have a uh, Harmony app uh, that shares the stories, and, and it also um, has, uh, we're, we're working on creating the songs on there as well. You see there it says online learning portal, we just, revamped our portal uh, for educators, um, gives you all of our resources online as well. Um, so you're able to, to, to do it by unit, by, by activity, by game. Would you like a water? I can get you a water. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> Just make sure. Grades three to six, we know that uh, students engage differently at that, at that grade level. So we have um, games and activities that are like board games, that they roll dice, um, all incorporating the same themes. Um, so they're playing games that they, they want to play as a group, but also uh, utilizing the same themes. Um, so they align with the lessons and activities. Our lessons and activities is pretty much like a lesson plan book has everything in here with steps to follow, the, the actual resources in the back to, for the activities. Um, it has, and we have this online as well, so it's easy to print, um, you know, all of that if you'd like to print. And then there's also um, research and relevance. The cool thing about the research and relevance that I really love is that it gets you to think about it before you even do the lesson so that you're also um, getting the insight of the activity prior to just giving it to the students. So, and it's a quick question that I ask you. Um, tells you a little bit about the research, and then it asks you a question. Um, so that, that way you can be in the right mindset when you're doing the activity as well. Role playing, it has a lot of activities, collaborations, role playing, creative um, activities, um, really role playing and problem solving, and then peer pressure, stereotyping, understanding, perspectives, growth mindset. As you get to the older ones, we have a game that's called Battle of the Bullies. Um, really gets the topic of bullying into the hands of the students so that they're aware of it, um, but also tells them how to problem solve in those, in those um, areas. Um, and then there's another one that's called the wisest game, um, and then one that, that is about people matching and just kind of talking about um, diversity um, within the classroom. This is our online learning portal. Um, 
you actually, once you gain access to this, um, and those flyers here have our contact information in the back, the brochures um, have the contact information in the back. Uh, please contact us, and then we'll let you know how to get access to our program. Um, right here, you create pretty much like a dashboard um, for yourself. So what grade you're in, you choose that when you first register, you choose what grade level. Um, it'll automatically then default to that grade level, but doesn't mean that you don't have the option to, to filter through the other ones. So you'll just easily change the grade level there, and it'll give you the units. It's broken down by unit. Once you go into the units, it actually gives you the ease of choosing games, to choosing a storybooks, to choosing songs, and really easy access to all of it. Um, and we also have a lot of other resources there. We'll always have spotlights. If you want a quick connection of the day, you just pull that up, and that day you talk about a quick connection um, to start off your day. Um, it, it's really a lot of resources. We're very excited. This actually just launched uh, last month. Um, this, this portal in itself and we're getting really good feedback and the ease of access is amazing. So we're, we're very happy with it. Alrighty, I've done a lot of talking. Dale did some talking. <laughs> Any questions? Has this ever been used anywhere else besides in a regular elementary classroom environment? Yeah, so communities and schools use it. Um, communities and schools use it outside of the environment and, and what they do is that they have their site coordinators, they also have one-on-one -on -one sessions with students, kind of like counseling departments. Um, we've also used it with boys and girls clubs, we've used it with YMCAs. We pretty much, anywhere where there's students and learners, we will take this program and, and make it flexible to their needs. We have after school programs, LA's Best. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're partnered with over 19,000 organizations. Um, so it's schools, districts, organizations. Um, anywhere from from really in school to out of school time. Did you ever? Our folks use it as a pull out. So sometimes it's a buddy up, sometimes it's a meet up, uh, but it's during their pull out time with our case managed kids, uh, and they do that in support of faculty who are sometimes using it in <coughs> the classroom as well. So you talk about institutions and schools, etc. How do you answer a teacher who hears about this and wants to do? use it, mm -hmm. but his or her classroom, or his or her school isn't invested in a program like this. We always welcome it if the school, so we have different, depends on the approach, right? It depends on, on what the, if the school says you can do it if you want, but we're not adopting it, that's one thing. And if the school says no, you can't bring that program here, that's, a, that's an entire different thing. Um, but if a teacher says, I want to use it, my school's not looking to adopt it yet, um, but I want to start using it. Um, which many of you might have that, right? As individuals, you might say, yes, I heard about it, I want it. Um, we work with that as well because our goal is to get it to as many students as possible. We have different training pathways. Um, so if it's a smaller group of indi or individuals, we'll schedule live online training. So we're still gonna give you training, um, but the training is for you guys is at no cost. We continuously provide PD through webinars, um, through different opportunities throughout the year and then through our, our resource library as well. Um, and then if it's a bigger group that says, yes, let's do it as a, as a school or as a district or anything like that, we schedule that. So we're very flexible in scheduling trainings um, and getting, getting you all the materials, resources, and tools that you guys need um, and ensuring that everybody who wants to do it, um, that we work, we work with them to get it to their hands. Have you ever had cases where maybe two or three teachers hear about it, maybe two or three are here, mm -hmm. and like, hey, this is cool, you wanna try this? and it mushrooms into a school picking it up? That happens a lot. Sort of a feeder. Our, model, our model started with individuals um, in schools that, that were like one teacher or counselors were big advocates for our program because they saw the value in having that relationship right, right away. Um, and they also have a lot more one-on-ones -on -one, one -on with their students. Um, so they saw the value and then they would just trickle. Um, same thing with CIS. CIS has taken it and site coordinators have started, not even a teacher. Um, and the teacher's like, I want to do that. Or, you know, different, different administrators are, hey, I want to have a conversation. And we welcome all of that. Um, we, we have seen it go through, through that process as well. So the SOTF app said this is K through 12. Do you have anything available for high school? So we have piloted. Um, our curriculum is pre-K to sixth grade. Uh, CIS is pre-K to 12. Um, 
two different organizations, but we do offer, if you, if you want to look at the resources, we can tell you how we kind of use that um, with some of our pilot programs in middle school and high school. So definitely reach out, and then uh, we'll talk about um, what resources our library that's online as well has a lot of things that you, you can pick up to, to utilize with your students. We've used, it as, we've used the Harmony materials as high as eighth grade um, because some of our schools are K-8 schools um, that have been in our first round of 130 school pilots. So. Any, other pro any other questions? Awesome. Well, we thank you for joining us. Uh, Dale does have a, a few more, um, a little more information for you all. Sure. So I just wanted to say we started you out big. You're at the Schools of the Future Conference. So I started you out. Think about barriers, think about poverty, think about those broad issues. Kids need integrated supports. Those supports ought to be relationship-based. So my dream would be you bring communities and schools or some component of us. You can see on the screen we do a full affiliate, we do licensure, we do training. That's the big school of the future model, if you think about it that way. But what I would also say to you is, if you can't start that big to this question about how does this spread, this tool, which is, again, free. We got it for free from them, too. And I'm now using it with 17,000 students. Um, this is a great way to introduce this concept of relationship and student support to your schools. Whether you're a faculty member, um, this is not an add-on. This is something you use in class, or you're one of the support personnel. So you're here at this conference. So think about the big school change. This is a way to start a school change in a really one-to-one -one relationship base that I hope um, would drive you to the broader field of um, social-emotional learning and support and integrated student supports. So, thanks for your time. Thank you.